Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day. It is extremely hot out here, so I'm staying inside for the whole day, like a weirdo. But I would like to share my final and official thoughts on the Wii Knives Esprit. This is the full titanium model. This is a 20 CV blade, satin finished blade, orange peel titanium which is very, very fine, and I definitely would not call it orange peel, but, you know, that's how they market it as. A couple different deployment methods. You have front thumb stud, reverse thumb stud, or I guess other side thumb stud that you can reverse flick, and then front flipper. I'm not the biggest fan of front flippers, and this is the method that I engage with the absolute least with this knife, because uh, I just prefer the thumb studs. I've even considered chopping the actual front flipper but you know that's a uh, part of the design so i picked this knife up from blade hq it was on a sale it was a couple a couple dollars off nothing too crazy i think it was like 190 192 that i got it for but now it is up back up to 219 also during the father's day sale let me set this off to the side for a second there was this little uh gas station knife, budget knife that came with it. Um, I understand a knife is a knife and it is a tool first and foremost, but this thing is built to the lowest standards of quality and safety. And like just a little bit of, a little bit of pull right there and the tip comes out, which snag on something, open it up, stab you in the ass. So uh, yeah, no, wouldn't recommend this little thing I, I won't even put the, the links in the description for this garbage. So I did get it to actually, uh, you know, actually cut material because out of the box, it wouldn't even cut hair. So, but you know, there's, there's that. Anyway, back to the important part of this video. If I didn't mention before, this current model is $200 Two, well, excuse me, 219. That's it. There are other variants of this that are available. This one is currently out of stock. This is now the second or third time it's gone out of stock, which is kind of unfortunate because this is a really nice knife. It is. Um, and for the price, I think you're getting a good bit of quality here, that's for sure. And coming from We Knife Co., I mean, it's just good stuff. It's just good stuff coming, it's coming out of that company. So let's get into specs. I'm pulling the specs off of Blade HQ's website. So overall length is 7.44, blade length is 3.25, cutting edge is 3.125. Uh, let's see, material 20 CVM 20 CV, drop point blade, flat ground, which yes, technically it is flat ground. It's not hollow by any means, but it does have this large swedge that's like, what would you guys call that? Like one third? Yeah, there's that. Um, and then weight, uh, 3.45 ounces. The other two variants um, cost a little bit less. I think they were like 216. It really wasn't anything significantly less for the other variants. The only difference is that the backside is just plain titanium and um, it has marble carbon fiber scales, which would definitely uh, lighten up the knife overall. But let's get into some common size comparisons. I have the Civivi Knives Elementum, also in full tie. Very, very similar, but uh, the Esprit has just a little bit more blade length on that. The Spyderco Para 3. There's that. And this is just for visual reference. That's all it is. Demco 8020.5. So pretty darn close. Um, it has more cutting edge. Well, it looks to have a more cutting edge. Yeah, but that's just because the this is the shark's foot. That's all it is. If it was a drop point version, it would probably be a little bit larger. And then last but not least, I have two Benchmates here, Osborne 940 and the Almighty Bugout. So there you guys go. This is very similar to the overall dimensions of the Bugout. Quite the same bit of cutting edge almost, 
and a handle length. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's get this stuff out of the way. Alrighty, so this thing is, as I mentioned before, built to pretty high quality uh, standards of fit and finish, and I enjoy that. So it is perfectly centered. It is not making any contact with the back spacer. The pocket clip has nothing in the way. It is inset into the handle, and the screws are also flat, which is cool. Very, very simple clip. Um, I believe it is also titanium, and it shares the same finish. So this is very, very simple and plain tie looking knife but some people like that some people don't i enjoy it and it will be seeing some uh some anodizing and washing modifications later on in the future when uh whenever i get a chance to do that so of course this is a frame lock um pretty easy to get used to disengaging it it is relatively smooth it has a ceramic detent ball ceramic cage ball bearings and I do kind of wish that there was a little bit more access right there, but that's all right. You get used to it. So the engagement of the thumb studs, it's just like they're, they're literally the same design as every single thumb stud that we, Civivi and probably Sencut make at this point. They work just like their clips. You know, they use like the same exact bent clip on everything, but if it works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So there's a little pivot logo I like that. It's cool. This is a design by Ray Laconico. If you guys don't know, um, you guys can look him up on Instagram. He is a master at making, in my opinion, genuinely sexy freaking knives. They're extremely simple and extremely expensive, but mind you, expensive, not overpriced. I believe that while I've never handled any of his custom knives, I've heard a lot of good things about them. And they're just, there's, there's no other word that could be used to describe how attractive these knives look. So they're not overly tactical. They're not super gentlemanly or anything like that. They're just, they're just awfully sexy. That's all it is. So this was a design that was uh, sold to Hui, which is cool and all. And I'm sure he has a lot of other uh, models. I think he does Monterey Bay knives. Majority of their stuff is from him, if not all of their models, which is cool. Um, but besides that, um, a little issue I did have with this knife is that while I understand it's not, it doesn't fall into any specific realm of tactical or gentlemanly or, or really EDC, because like. The bug out is more, you know, EDC. It has a very, very slim blade and, you know, slim handles and all that. But this guy has really full feeling uh, titanium scales. And while there is some weight relieving in there and they do look a little thin, there is contouring to it. So it definitely does fill up the hand quite well. And in my opinion, it is extremely, extremely comfortable. So I don't feel the clip. I don't feel any hot spots anywhere. But what I do kind of wish, and a lot of people associate it with uh, tacticalness, is I wish there was actually a little bit more jimping, meaningful jimping, because this crap up here does absolutely nothing. This this bites into like down over here, if you can see that. There is no other way to grip this knife than this, because there's no like forward finger control. There's no like safe space to put your finger for a little bit more leverage. So I kind of wish that maybe they took the Ray Laconico name off of there, maybe put it like back here or on the clip or like inside. I've seen that before. It's not a bad look. And especially if you're trying to keep this knife so clean looking like, look, there's nothing on the blade. There's not a, I, can't, I couldn't even find the steel stamp. A 20, CPM 20 CV, if I didn't mention it before, pretty sure I did. Um, great steel to sharpen. This thing wasn't too impressive out of the box when it came to its sharpness, but I did uh, touch it up a little bit on my guided system and it is to my standards now and I love it and enjoy it. It flies the material rather well. And while I've learned that this is not so much of a, you know, fancy paper slicer, this thing blows through cardboard, which I love. And I go through more cardboard than I do paper at work anyway. So uh, that works out for me. The hardware on here, this is a T8, T8 Chicago screws go all the way through. Uh, I wouldn't be too concerned about 
the threads being messed up uh, an easy way and it's a little trick that I was taught like a long long ass time ago by a friend is that every time you engage a screw or when it's when it's out already and you're gonna put it into the threads reverse it just by like half a turn and you'll feel the threads drop in properly and line up and then you can start and you know lefty loosey righty tighty and all that good stuff so I've been using that method every time I, you know, disassemble and do basic maintenance on this knife. I've taken it apart a couple times and each time it just gets smoother and smoother. Plenty of stuff gets trapped in here. Um, it's going to happen if you're going to use a knife. That's okay. And that is completely normal. Um, so you definitely feel the, uh, the action start to slow down a little bit, especially on the close. But I mean, it's, I would call this broken in at this point. Um, I took forever to actually make this little review on this thing. Um, but I missed the first time that it came out. I just didn't have the money at the time. Money was going elsewhere. And when this became a thing, I fell in love with it. And so did apparently a crap ton of other people. And they bought them all out. And then I think like six months later or so, we was able to supply a new batch, which is cool and all. Um... Oh, um, if I forgot to mention about the, the screws, so T8, T8, the pivot is also T8. It has a little collar ring just for decoration purposes, which is, you know, not a big deal or, you know, it's not great. It's not bad. It's, it's just a thing that I've noticed that we does with a handful of their models, if not all of them. The screws in there are actually T6, not a big deal. I think we're all uh, used to that at this point. I don't really think that's ever going to change. Um, if there, if I've missed anything, I apologize, but at this point in time, I think I've gone through everything that's worth mentioning about this knife. It's extremely comfortable. I love how it looks so much. I am, I am completely in love of how this knife looks. Um, you know, maybe I wish that, uh, you know, the blade finish was offered something else or like you could get these, you know, maybe purchase these scales separately. I don't know, but uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the combination of the satin finish with this uh, orange peel texture because it's just, it's so hard to keep it clean. And I actually use a lot of my knives. And like, I, I, I mean, I use it for everything in the kitchen, outside in the garden, at work. Um, I don't know, I've gotten this thing pretty dirty and muddy already and while it cleans up very, very well, and I have not noticed any major scratches to the finish, really any light scratches at all. Um, I mean, it still looks quite pristine in my opinion. Like it's pretty, don't get me wrong, it really is. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's not my thing. But if I wanted a different blade option, I would just have, I mean, it's as simple as just buying another one and swapping, uh, you know, the blades on that. and. You know, if I want to just sell the, sell the other one with a blade swap. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. I highly recommend this knife. I will be putting the links in the description. Um, if I didn't say it already, this one specifically is out of stock right now. But there are two other ones that look quite as good. And, uh, you know, just leave it, in your, leave it in your wish list, the full titanium version that you know this one is and maybe they'll come back in stock sometime soon and you guys can snag it if you haven't already but thank you guys for watching i hope you have a wonderful day